In this video, we're going to review how ions get transported across membranes from a thermodynamic perspective. Ion transport across membranes uh, plays a key role in a variety of uh, uh, cellular processes, including uh, signal transduction across neurons and so forth. Now, so the, uh, what we're trying to do in this video is just come up with a thermodynamic foundation to recognize whether uh, transporting an ion from the outside of a membrane to the inside of a membrane uh, can be done passively, that means without any external aid, or whether uh, you actually need to maybe hydrolyze ATP or supply some, some sort of uh, energy's work uh, in order for that process uh, uh, to happen, in which uh, would be an example of active transport. Okay, so let's uh, uh, then talk about this uh, transport in kind of general terms. Okay, so we're going to draw here a very rudimentary picture of uh, membrane where this will be the outside and this is going to be the inside. Okay, so um, the, uh, what is going to be, uh, or a starting point, is to recognize that this ion that we're going to call uh, maybe, I don't know, B minus, uh, right? Um, there you might have different concentrations of uh, that ion or that, that substance uh, in the outside and in the inside. Okay, so th then the idea is, is whether this uh, uh, transport is going to be spontaneous or non-spontaneous is going to depend on the difference of chemical potential uh, between the outside and the inside. Again, spontaneity is provided at constant temperature and pressure by the change in the Gibbs energy, which is simply the balance of the chemical potentials for these species, right? So if we write here an expression, which is going to be delta G for the transport of that ion, Okay, again, notice that this is simply going to be the Gibbs energy uh, at the end of this process, which will be the uh, Gibbs energy in the inside or the chemical potential in the inside of the membrane, uh, minus the initial Gibbs energy, which will be uh, the chemical potential in the outside. Okay, so uh, that's our starting point. All right, so we know how to write these chemical potentials for a variety of substances. This is just the chemical potential at some reference, uh, uh, which we can just write like this, okay, plus RT natural log of the activity of that species in the inside. And then from here, we have to uh, subtract the chemical potential in the outside of that membrane, which will be the following term. Okay, all right, that's the activity in the outside. All right, so taking the difference, notice that these uh, standard or reference uh, potentials uh, can cancel out. So this delta G is simply going to be equal to RT, natural log of the activity in the inside over the activity in the outside. Right, we also know how to map those activities into useful measures of concentration. So if you actually have, say, more concentrations, then that will be the more concentration in the inside divided over one more and then the molar concentration in the outside divided over one molar. Okay, something that is quite important here is to, to recognize that in order for the uh, transfer to be spontaneous, you need a negative sign in this delta G. And that can only happen if uh, you're going to be taking here the natural log of a number between zero and one. And ultimately what that means is that in order for this process to be spontaneous, then uh, the activity or the concentration of that species inside the membrane has to be lower than outside the membrane. Okay, if we put here numbers, so for example, I don't know, 0.10 molar concentration of B minus outside and 0.010 molar concentration of B minus in the inside, then you can clearly see that the natural tendency for the transfer would be from the outside to the inside. But now we can quantify that very nicely using that expression because what you're going to have here is simply uh, uh, the natural log of 0 0.10 divided, uh, sorry, 0 0.010 in the numerator divided over 0 0.10 in the denominator. So that is the natural log of 0 0.1, which is a negative number, and that means that the transport will be spontaneous. We're gonna solve a problem uh, at the end of the video. Now, this is just fine, and again, you can clearly see how this expression uh, that is a simple thermodynamic argument really bears our expectation that the difference in, in uh, this gradient of concentration is going to dictate 
uh, the direction for spontaneous transport. Uh, you know, that, that's actually only uh, uh, one of the pieces of this puzzle, right? And that is just the concentration uh, part of the transport. Uh, but notice that these, uh, uh, these species that we're trying to transport in this example are also ions. And in uh, human cells, or in, in, in many cells, you actually have that there might be a difference in the amount of charge in the inside and the outside of uh, cell membrane. For example, uh, in, in, uh, in most tissues, you actually have the extracellular concentration of sodium ions and chloride ions is actually larger than on the inside. Okay, but the concentration of potassium ions tends to be larger in the inside than in the outside. Right, so this, this imbalance of the concentration of ions means that uh, you actually might have an imbalance of charge to either side of the membrane. Okay, so that is actually quantified by something that we're going to be calling the transmembrane potential, okay, and that's uh, delta phi. This tells you, uh, again, how that imbalance of charge is between the outside uh, of the membrane and the inside. Now, negative numbers here, so uh, we're going to write here an example, for example, minus 70 millivolts. Okay, negative numbers tell you that the inside of the membrane is more negative than the outside of the membrane. Okay, and uh, this actually, this value of 70 uh, or minus 70 millivolts is a fairly typical value for, uh, you know, a nerve cell uh, to have. And these, these uh, transmission potentials might change according to uh, uh, where you are in the transmission of, uh, of a neural signal, uh, but 70 millivolts, negative 70 millivolts is actually fairly reasonable. Now, uh, obviously, the presence of this transmembrane potential is going to affect uh, the Gibbs energy. Right? Notice that here you have uh, uh, that the inside of the membrane is more negative than the outside of the membrane. Right? So transporting this negative ion uh, across that uh, membrane into a, a situation where you're going to have very many negative charges right here, right? That is going to be costly from a thermodynamic perspective because you're trying to put a negative ion, right, in a, a region of, of uh, space where you have a lot of electrostatic repulsion from the presence of lots of negative ions. Okay, so, so somehow we know that we have to correct this uh, change in Gibbs energy expression to take into consideration the fact that when you're transporting ions, you might have these favorable or unfavorable uh, electrostatic repulsions uh, uh, in those ions. Right. So the way that this is done is simply by uh, uh, noticing that this is just going to be a function of that transmembrane potential. Okay, and uh, obviously the charge of the ion is also involved. That's what this uh, low case C is. Okay, and then uh, from here you just have to uh, include here a factor that is going to allow you to do a conversion between the units of this transmembrane potential, which is volts or millivolts, and joules, which is uh, uh, what the Gibbs energy uh, is coded as. Right. So this F is simply the Faraday constant, uh, which is a value that is that is well known, nine point six four eight coulombs per mole. Right? This is going to be given in volts, and this is simply the charge of the ion that you're trying to transport. Okay, and it turns out that uh, this charge is going to be dimensionless. So if this is, say, a chloride ion, that will be a minus one. If it's a sodium ion, it will be plus one. Okay, but uh, Coulomb times volt actually happens to be joules. So the units that you get out of this is joules per mole. Okay, so this uh, charge times Faraday constant times the transmembrane potential is going to give you that contribution to the transfer from uh, the charge of that ion that you're trying to uh, uh, move across that membrane. All right, so let's uh, put, it everything, put everything together by solving a numerical example in which we're gonna try to transfer, say, a chloride ion. Okay, so this uh, B minus now is going to be chloride, okay? And uh, you have these uh, concentrations in the outside, that concentration in the inside, and then the transmembrane potential is minus 70 millivolts. And the question that we're asking is, well, uh, will this be an active uh, uh, process of uh, transport or passive, right? So, uh, so non-spontaneous 
versus spontaneous. All right, let's try to calculate how that uh, would work out. All right, so we just uh, have all of the data that we actually need. Uh, we just have to make sure that we plug it with uh, the right units. Okay, so that R is going to be 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. T is 298 Kelvin. We're doing this at room temperature, so this will not be physiological temperature, but uh, this will be an experiment that you would do with maybe a synthetic membrane uh, in the lab. And then the natural log of the activity inside or the activity outside. So uh, inside, that activity is going to be 0 0.010 molar divided over 1 molar. And then in the outside is 0 0.10 molar divided over 1 molar. And to this, we simply have to add that term that uh, accounts for that unevenness in the charges in the inside and the outside. Okay, so the charge of your ion is going to be uh, minus one. Okay. And um, uh, actually, we're, we're not going to transfer here chloride. Instead, we're going to do a positive ion to actually facilitate transfer. Okay, sodium plus and sodium plus. The rest is just exactly the same. So the charge is actually not minus one, but plus one. And then here we're going to have a Faraday's constant 9.864, sorry, 648, 10 to the 4 joules per, uh, sorry, uh, coulombs per mole. And then the transmember potential uh, is going to be minus 70 millivolts, but this has to be transformed into volts. Okay, so the units are going to be uh, minus 0 0.070 volts. Okay, so that we get. Uh, joules per mole out of this. Okay, so when you put all that together, delta G is going to have uh, uh, a number that is uh, equal to uh, the following, minus 12 point, uh, minus 12 actually, times 10 to the 3, uh, 10, 10 to the plus 3, so it's 12 kilojoules per mole. Okay, or 12, 10 to the 3 joules per mole. Let me write that a little better, plus 3. Okay, the important thing here is that sign, which is negative. What that means is that the transport of this sodium ion uh, from a situation of high concentration to low concentration across a membrane that has an excess of negative charges in the inside versus the outside is, as you expected, favorable, is spontaneous, right? So, so this could actually be ha happen passively. You don't need to have any couple process uh, to facilitate this. Yes, thermodynamically, it just should happen. We don't know how quickly it's going to happen, but that ion should diffuse. Okay, notice that uh, uh, if this number would have been positive, what that would mean is that the transport would actually not be spontaneous, but you can still have it if you couple some process that is uh, exorganic that is going to provide. Uh, gives energy or the ability to do uh, work, okay, to that transfer. Okay, so, so that's how active transport across, across membranes works. Uh, you actually are trying to transport uh, ions with a, del a delta G that is going to be positive, and then to overcome that limitation, that that fact that the transport would not be spontaneous, you couple this to maybe hydrolysis of ATP, which is going to help turning the overall delta G of the transport and the hydrolysis of ATP into an overall negative number, which means that it should be spontaneous overall. Okay, so in this video we have seen uh, the ins and outs of uh, the thermodynamics of ion transport across membranes.